guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be the things that i think you need as a first year teacher last year was my first year teaching i taught kindergarten and it was the best year of my life i absolutely love it i love what i do i'm so thankful to be in kindergarten that was like my dream grade and i got it so throughout the year i made <laughs> a little sticky note list of all the things that I wanted to share with you that I think you need as a first year teacher. So we are going to get into it. Some of the things I have here, some of the things are in my classroom and I was going to wait to film this video in my classroom so I could actually show you the items, but I mean, I'll just put a picture here and you can see what I'm talking about. Also our classroom hallway flooded. So I guess the, the, what is that called? Water fountain? Um, like blew up or something. So it wasn't in our hallway, it was in the first grade hallway, but we're not allowed to go up there right now. So I'm just going to share the things on here that I think you need and we will get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Megan. I am a second year kindergarten teacher in Texas and I would love to have you on my channel. So give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and let's get into the video. <laughs> laminator and the Amazon basics one and I am here to tell you in my personal opinion the scotch one is far better than the Amazon one in my opinion I had the Amazon one only for a few months and it wouldn't even turn on anymore so I'm not really sure what happened with it and they're about the same price this one is 21 something at Walmart and I think the Amazon one is around there, $23, $24, but I've had this one for almost a year now, never had a problem with it, and it works great, so, and it's affordable, so I highly recommend Scotch over the Amazon Basics, but when it comes to laminating sheets, I prefer the Amazon Basics ones because you get a hundred in a pack, and they're like 12 or $13, and the Scotch ones, on the other hand, you get like 15 for $20, not worth it. These ones are just as great. They come in this little sleeve and they're just as thick. They're fantastic. So when it comes to laminating sheets, I would definitely go the cheaper route and get the Amazon Basics brand because I've never had a problem with these and they are just as good of quality as these Scotch ones. So that is my opinion on laminators. Next, I wrote clipboards. I did not have a class set of clipboards until Christmas of last year. I, obviously as a first year teacher, you don't have everything that you need right away. Um, one of my kids' parents was so nice and got me a class set of clipboards. I think these are really helpful when you're doing um, write the rooms. I do a lot of those for seasonal centers. Um, so they can just grab a clipboard whenever they're working in partners. I let them use clipboards. I just think they're an awesome differentiated use of, so I don't have to sit at their desk. They can use a clipboard and go sit somewhere else in the room. Um, flexible seating. You can do a million and 10 things with clipboards. Um, and I think they're just a cool tool to have in your classroom. Um, I think the set that I had on my Amazon wish list was like 20 or 30 of them. 24 of them for like 40 bucks. So it's not a terrible price, but you could also slowly accumulate them like at the dollar store or thrift stores or Walmart, you could get a class set. Next, I wrote whiteboards. Now those, I would say are definitely a must have. I use those all the time um, in whole group. If I wanna do a quick check, I'll have them use their whiteboards and hold it up. Um, in the word workstation, that is one of my centers, I let them use whiteboards to write their sight words, write sentences, um, math, I let them use those. A million and 10 things you can do with um, whiteboards as well. So that's another thing. Those are a little more on the pricey side. Um, I was gifted a set of them through Donor Shirt, Donors Choose. And if you haven't used Donors Choose, I highly recommend it. It's such a cool thing to be able to get stuff for your classroom from a lot of really kind and generous people. So if you haven't used Donors Choose, that is definitely something I would suggest 
to get some of these things for your classroom. Next thing, magnetic letters, but specifically resin letters, if you haven't seen them. This is what they look like. They are so stinking cool. So magnetic letters, of course, I use magnetic letters um, in whole group on my whiteboard to do CBC words, sight words. And then um, in my guided reading groups, I give them whiteboards and words. And as a quick check, um, before we jump into guided reading, I say spell the word like, and they do it on their board. Um, you can use magnetic letters, like I said, a million and 10 ways too. But it's just beneficial to have a bunch of sets so that you can put them in centers. You can use them at your table. You can use them in whole group instruction. They're just really versatile. And then resin letters are so cool. My cousin is so talented at resin letters and she made me a few sets. And the ones I picked are clear and they have sprinkles in them. So just a fun way for the kids to learn their letters, spell words in a way that's different than just magnetic letters. So hopefully they really enjoy them. I'm gonna put some in the center at the beginning of the year for um, letter identification, um, sight words, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you have the chance to get some of those, I would get them because they're really, really cool. Next, something for you. Um, I put a coffee station or whatever sparks your joy. So in the morning, coffee is what sparks my joy. So in my classroom, I have a whole little coffee setup. I have a coffee pot, I have creamer, I have just all the things that I enjoy in the morning to make a cup of coffee, midday slump. You can make yourself a cup of coffee, but if it's something else for you, if you like tea or whatever it might be, just have that in your classroom for you to access so you have something that motivates you and sparks your joy. So put that in the next thing, books. This is like my number one must have priority. Even before you're a teacher, if you're in college, whatever, start saving books. Go buy books at thrift stores. Like I cannot stress enough how amazing that was that I started doing that. I started doing it my sophomore year, like after holidays at Walmart and stuff when they'd go on clearance, I would buy them. I go to thrift stores all the time. I love thrifting. <laughs> so I always go to thrift stores, get books. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I find half the books that I'm looking for for a fraction of the cost than if I paid full price. So if you saw my classroom set of vlogs, you know I have a plethora of books and that is because I thrifted them. Garage sales, all those things are so helpful when you're looking for books. But I definitely recommend if you wanna teach the lower grades elementary to start saving books now because you will be so happy you did when you're teaching and you don't have to buy a book every week for a lesson that you don't have. <laughs> Next, book bins or storage bins. So again, if you saw my classroom set up, the book bins that I have are the locker bins from Dollar Tree. And I absolutely love these. So originally I hadn't really planned on having the kids have their own individual supply buckets. I just had never really thought of that. And then when COVID happened, I kind of had to have them all have individual bins. And thankfully I had built in storage in my classroom where they could each have a cubby. So that is what I did. I labeled the book bins with a number that coordinated to the student and they kept all their supplies in there. And it was so helpful. Their crayons, markers, headphones, all of that stuff stayed in the locker bin. And it was so helpful because their stuff wasn't all over their desk. And it was so cheap. I paid $20 for 20 bins for each of my kids. So it worked out. I also use them in my cabinets to store like plates and cups and all that kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm waiting for my coffee right now. <laughs> Actually, I haven't had coffee yet. Um, but it's just a cheap way to get a bunch of storage for your classroom. So bins, um, Michael's also has like the scrapbook bins that are also really good. I put my, um, like stations, like themed stations in those and they stack really well. So just any type of storage because as a teacher, you accumulate so much crap and you just need places to keep it organized. Um, next, I actually need to put this together because I got another one from my mom. It's the 10 drawer cart with all the little dividers. Here's a picture. Um, I used mine last year for each day of the week to put my copies for the whole day. I would plan for the whole week and then put the copies in those drawers. Um, and then I keep like their assessments in there, hall passes and all that stuff in the other three drawers. 
And then last year I didn't have much time to get my costume done. So I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do like fun stuff that I wanted to. But this year my mom got me another one of the clear cards and my idea is to make a word work cart. So my kids do word work every single day for like 20, 25 minutes. One group's with me, one's at the word work station, one is sorting to themselves and then they're sorting with someone. So we do that, like I said, every day. And when they go to the word work station, all I had in there last year was magnetic letters and whiteboards, which was fine. The kids still enjoyed it and loved it. But this year I just wanted to do something more differentiated, give them different options because we do do it every day and I don't want them to get like burnout or bored of just writing it on whiteboards or just using magnetic letters. So my idea, which I'll have a whole other video on this once I build it, um, but it's gonna have like rainbow words, smelly words, um, etch sketches, uh, whiteboards, what else did I say? Resin letters. There's gonna be a bunch of different ones. So that is something that is super cool, and I think that they'll really enjoy it, and then I'll just slowly introduce them as like as the year goes on. I'm not gonna give them all to them on the first day of school, but as they master some, then I'll introduce a new one. But it's just a fun way to differentiate your stations. Um, and the cart is just amazing in general to stay organized. So I have two of those, highly recommend them. Um, they're usually $29 at Michael's, which is a really good price. Um, next, I have a crayon sharpener and a pencil sharpener. So the pencil sharpener I have is the Exacto brand. I don't allow my kids to sharpen their pencils or their crayons, I do that. <laughs> so I know that like it's not gonna break. Um, so my pencil sharpener, like I said, is the Exacto brand. It's great, I've never had a problem with it. And then the crayon sharpener is probably one of the coolest things I've ever gotten. One of my kids' parents got it for me last year. And when they're, you know, when their crayons get flat because they go so hard, um, it sharpens it like straight to a new point. So it's like $50, so it's kind of pricey. But I feel like for you, the amount of crayons that you have to keep giving them, it almost like pays for itself <laughs> in the fact that they can still use the same crayon. They can't say, oh, it's broken. You can just sharpen it and it's good as new. So if you are able to get one of those, I would definitely say that that's a lifesaver, especially if you teach kindergarten first, second, where you do a lot of coloring, um, it's necessary. Next, I put educational stations. So some of the stations that I got for my kids my first year was like slap a sight word um, where they just have the sight words on flies and then they take fly swatters and they compete to see who can get the most sight words. That one was super cheap on Amazon, like $12 and I used it all year. It comes with like 150 flies of the different words. So every time you learn a new sight word, you can add it to the game and they just loved it. It was a lot of fun. Um, another one I did was I took the border from Target that has like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, laminated it, and then I took the alpha clips and that was a letter rec recognition station. So they had to clip the letter to the corresponding capital letter on the bulletin border and they really liked that too. Um, what else did I have? A lot of stations you can find on Pinterest that are free and are really good for like seasonal. I love doing everything seasonal pumpkins, apples, all the things. So I try to make stations um, that fit the season because it makes me happy. So I'm hoping it makes them happy. But you can find a lot of those for free on Pinterest and Teachers Pay Teachers. You just kind of have to dig a little bit. What else? Reading baggies. So reading baggies are something that I implemented as soon as I started having them take home reading homework. I'm gonna implement it a little bit sooner this year. I think I waited a little bit too long to do it last year, um, but this year I wanna do it so the parents can get in a routine and know what I expect of their child. But at first I used Ziploc bags as the reading bags and that was just a fail. They ripped, you know, kids, like they, they just didn't work out. So I got this 24 pack of reading baggies on Amazon and they're great. I just printed off their little name plates, duct taped it on there with packing tape and that's where they kept all of their reading supplies. It had like comprehension questions for the parents to ask their kid as they read, um, like to help tell the parent like what you should be looking for as your child reads, how you can help your child, all this kind of stuff, all these resources in there. Um, I kept the little 
googly eye reading fingers in there, a bunch of stuff. I, everything that they needed for their reading homework, I kept in that baggie and they held up, they were durable, they were great, and they're so affordable. They were like $12.96 or something like that. But for $24, it's a great price and they just worked out really, really nicely. So that is something I, that's like probably my top five of something that you really need in your classroom. Let's see, how many things have I told you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Number 13. Oh, I guess I have 15 things. Okay. Number 13, did I say 13? <laughs> Okay, bulletin border storage, okay? I don't know how other teachers do this, but I literally couldn't live without this bulletin border storage. So it looks like this, and you open it, and it has all of these little slits for you to put the bulletin border, and then you roll it up like a little burrito, and it literally can just like fit under a cabinet. It's the coolest thing ever. It was like $13, and I literally love it. I don't know where I would put my bulletin borders if I didn't have that thing. So. If you need a bulletin board storage thing, that is something I would highly recommend because it is great. Let's see, planner. I talked about that in my What's in My Teacher Bag video. You don't need an expensive planner, just something so you can keep track of meetings and conferences and all the things that we have to do as teachers. You know, I know we have a million and 10 things to do. And I used to be really good about remembering everything, but once it gets to be so much, I just like have to write it down. So having a planner in your bag when you go to meetings and stuff, it's just, you don't need an expensive one. Like me, I don't use the planner to its full capability. So just getting a cheap one from Walmart is totally fine. You don't have to have a happy planner. You don't have to have a happy planner, okay? Okay, this is like my number one, I would say, as far as like teacher wants and needs, you know? Um, I would say this is like something that I couldn't live without because my classroom is far from the teacher's lounge, like across campus, okay? And so having this was like so freaking cool. It is this Hot Logic Mini. And what it is basically is a hot pad for your lunch. So I took my lunch every day and I used the Pyrex glass dishes. You just plug that bad boy in, put your food in there, and it heats it like all the way. I'm pretty sure it can even cook like raw chicken. Never tried that. That's like a little, little ambitious for me, but just to like heat your food so you don't have to walk down and use the microwave. Coolest thing ever. So if you don't like to go to the teacher's lounge on your lunch and you like to eat in your classroom, cause I eat in my classroom by myself, just my 30 minutes of peace, get one of those because it is so freaking cool how fast it heats up your food and never have a problem with it. It's great. And the last thing I have is a classroom decor pack. So after you decide like what your classroom theme is going to be, get a decor back pack from TBT because that is going to be the biggest bang for your buck as far as like getting an alphabet, getting letters, getting a number line, getting all those things that fill up your classroom with that are like actually educational that your kids will use. You can find basically any theme on TPT. So I think my pack was originally $60 and I got it on sale for 30. So you can definitely find whatever theme it is that you're looking for. Um, but that just is the easiest way to get all the resources you need really for your classroom and not spend a lot of money doing so. So that has been what you need for your classroom as a first year teacher. Coming from the person who literally bought everything those are things that I've actually used and use like basically every day. So these are some trusty things. Now, some things you don't need, <laughs> but are fun, okay? Um, I just have a few of them in here. So if you don't have a treasure box, I think a treasure box is a good thing to have because it motivates the kids. Sorry, <laughs> it motivates the kids. And it's just a fun little incentive. So I got a few things to fill up the treasure box. These are little animal erasers that were $2.99 and then 40% off. And then these are crayons, little crayon sticks. So just little fun incentives to give your kids um, that motivates them. I shared this in another video, but this whole pack of pencils from Michaels was like $4.48 and you get 48 pieces. So you get 24 pencils 
and 24 erasers for that price. Thumbnail. <laughs> so super good price and there's a bunch so it's like totally cool for girls and boys but that is all i hope that helped you kind of have an idea of things that i actually used in my classroom and things that you might find helpful if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye